That should work. Uh, what am I saying? Hey everyone, I haven't done a vlog in so long. I've been living in London again for the last six months. On the outskirts of London really, we call it Outer London. And I can't help but compare what it was like living in Melbourne to what it's like now living in London. So, I really miss vlogging, I thought why not do a vlog about it? So here is my comparison of living in Melbourne versus living in London. I'm going to separate this out into different categories. The categories are cost of living, weather, transport, social life, work-life balance and location. Hopefully this is useful to anyone out there. I've tried to be fair. I know it's hard to compare at the moment, particularly as England is in lockdown and Australia isn't. So the first category, cost of living. Now I've done a bit of research for this vlog. I've discovered that on average rent is 15% cheaper in Melbourne for a similar sized place. Nice place you got here. However, grocery shopping is 35% higher. We definitely felt we noticed this when we were shopping out there. Although I did quite like how food was very seasonal. If it wasn't growing locally, it would cost more. If it was growing, then it would cost less. What I think has the biggest impact is the fact that salaries are 30% higher on average in Melbourne. Now, in our experience, it is actually harder to get work there. But once you do, you are well looked after. I know for a fact that teachers start off on the equivalent of £10,000 more a year than they do starting out in England. I know I've said in the past that math is important, and it is! Also, we found properties to be better value there because in general you weren't living so close to other houses. You got more space or apartment blocks were less congested. Whereas here in London, it does feel particularly congested. Especially coming back, I'm noticing a lot more just how much everyone is living on top of each other. So not only is it better value for the amount of space you get to live in, but you actually have more space between each property. So cost of living, I have to say the winner is Melbourne. Next category, weather. Melbourne, the average weather ranges from 6 degrees to 26 degrees. For Australia, it's one of the colder parts to be in during their winter. So very, very cold. However, it has exception days. There was a day at over 40 degrees when we were there. It was way too hot. So there are some really hot summer days that are quite hard to deal with especially if you're not used to it. So Melbourne's winters don't get quite as cold as in England. You don't see snow or anything like that. Mush, nerds, mush! Something we really liked out there, even in the winter, was the fact that usually you'd get to see a blue sky every day, or you'd get to see through the clouds. Here in England, I am already really sick of just overcast like living in a bubble of grey clouds. Melbourne also has some of the rarest pollens in the world. A doctor out there told me it was the hay fever capital of the world. So if you're particularly sensitive to hay fever, this might be a factor for you to consider. Interestingly enough, a medication I have for my hay fever here in England, which is prescription only, didn't require a prescription out there. So I bought it over the counter and that helped me deal with the majority of my hay fever. London's weather is less predictable. Our temperature ranges from 4 degrees on average to 23 degrees in the summer, although you do get big exceptions. In the last few days we've had snow here and it's been as cold as minus 4. This doesn't happen every year and I actually quite enjoyed seeing the snow. It's nice to experience the different seasons, however it is a bit of a struggle in London how inconsistent the seasons can be. In the summer we might have an amazing day, or we might have a really horrible rainy few weeks of summer and you never know what to expect. Also, in England we're not quite kitted out for the summer, so everyone, when it gets too hot, we don't have air conditioning and it gets really hot. Come on, it is well hot. But in Melbourne, they didn't really know how to deal with the winter and it was very cold indoors and they didn't have 
inbuilt central heating. So I suppose it's even in those aspects. Weighing up both places, it's really hard to choose a winner. I think I'm going to give it to Melbourne, purely because they have more blue skies and it is a bit more consistent and you can know what to expect each time of year. The next category is transport. Melbourne is newer, it's a newer city to London and therefore it has more space. It's not as much of a premium as it is here. Driving is much easier to get around due to their giant five or six lane freeways everywhere and the fact that the city is made into blocks helps keep traffic sort of regulated and uh, less confusing. Cycling is also much better I find in Melbourne because they have so many purpose-built cycle lanes going through the city that aren't part of the roads. I thought this was a really good way to get around cycling in Melbourne. However, public transport in Melbourne was not as good. They do have trams, which really added a lot of character, but they weren't that frequent and they were fairly slow. In comparison, in London, public transport is fairly good. Not world class, but fairly good. We get buses and trains that are fairly regular, although can be disrupted by leaves on the tracks, etc. And although it is expensive compared to other public transport systems in cities in the world, they can be relied upon to get around the city fairly fast, especially thanks to bus lanes and the tube in London. Driving, however, is definitely not as good in London as it is in Melbourne. Most people I know wouldn't consider driving into the city centre because the roads are very congested, you have to pay a charge during the week, parking is very expensive, and it just generally isn't a nice experience driving through the centre of London. The higher density in population is really evident when you're on the roads. They're just very congested, and I know people from other countries come to England, see the roads and think, I'm not even gonna risk driving because the lanes are smaller and generally people are just a lot closer to each other here. Also, parking can be tricky, even in outer London where we live, because it's much less common to have a driveway, whereas in Melbourne, you'd assume someone with a house would have a driveway. Cycling around London is also not ideal. Many cycle lanes are on the road and cars are not very considerate of this. So the winner of this category, again, I'm going to have to say is Melbourne. The next category is social. Now Melbourne was great for trendy bars. We really like to go to Fitzroy and Brunswick. Lots of independently run breweries were there. However, drinking was more expensive in Melbourne. On average, drinking in Melbourne costs 11% more than London and London is expensive. Melbourne also has lots of other social activities. They have lots of sports centres around. Lorna joined a netball team and I joined a running team. We also went to a regular pub quiz where people who didn't know each other were encouraged to get in a team with each other. That was nice. Generally, I found people in Melbourne to be friendlier as well. G'day. Welcome to the land down under. They weren't afraid to acknowledge strangers in the streets, give a smile, say, how are you going? Supposed to be g'day, mate. Ah, oh, they, they, they don't really say that, do they? Don't they? London also has a lot of cool, trendy bars at cheaper prices than Melbourne. Sports clubs are also a common thing here. You have the regular running clubs on the weekend and Lorna joined a netball team or two here. Generally, people are less friendly. There's a lot of tutting and passive aggressive stares you get on public transport. You won't get acknowledged by strangers or a friendly chat. No sort of like courtesy so much. Well, excuse me for having enormous flaws that I don't work on. Some people like this. This isn't all Londoners, by the way. I think this is a result of the high density of population. There's just too many people to smile at each other. This category is a tricky one. We made some amazing friends in Melbourne, met some awesome people, and got to do some really cool activities with them. And I'm really grateful for those opportunities. However, our close family and people we went to school with, 
and sort of friends we've known for a very long time are here in London. And as a result, I'm going to give this category to London. The next category is work-life balance. Now, my only work life I've experienced in both places is as a teacher. I've made a video on this already, but the expectations of teaching are very different in both places. I found the expectations in Melbourne to be more realistic and more in keeping with looking after teachers. They had to do less marking and there wasn't an expectation to leave a paper trail of what you're doing all the time to show your accountability. London, it depends greatly on the school. My experiences have varied in different schools. In general though, I would say there is more pressure on accountability in London and leaving a paper trail just for the sake of being able to show you've done something rather than just getting on with teaching good lessons. Class dismissed! Lorna, however, has experienced a balance in both places. She found a lot of pressure in London and then she also found it to be a lot of pressure on her job in Melbourne. Now this might be because her job role was as a temp and she was working directly for somebody from Singapore and she thinks his work culture was from Singapore, very very authoritarian and less sort of well-being check-ins. You do your job better, you get points. So, Which we kind of expected in Australia. As I said before, it is harder to find a job in Melbourne, so you've got to include this in your decision. But I'm going to give the winner of this category to Melbourne because in my experience, I found the work-life balance to be better there. Final category is location. I suppose you could call this geography. Melbourne is in the south of Australia. So, in terms of holidays and travel from there, you can go to Tasmania, which is an island just to the south, or you can fly to different parts of Australia fairly easily. Sydney is just over an hour away. New Zealand is about three or four hours away. In the winter in Melbourne, when it's cold, you can fly for six hours to get to Queensland and have nice 23 degrees summer sort of weather, even though it'd be winter in Melbourne. However, these cultures are all very similar. They're all Australia or New Zealand. Aussie! Oi, oi, oi! Can I guess? And you're not getting too much variety. You're gonna find the same food chains in all these places. But if you really wanted to travel from Australia, you have to fly at least eight hours to Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, places like that. So you're quite far away from a trip that will really change your perspective on things. A Kiwi? Uh-oh, uh -oh. Australian, uh-oh. <laughs> London, however, is very close to Europe. You can fly to really exotic, exciting places in an hour. You could fly to Amsterdam, Italy, Scotland, anywhere like that and see some very different cultures from London. Right here, chop heart and lungs, boiled in a wee sheep's stomach, taste as good as it sounds. You can fly pretty much anywhere in Europe in under four hours. So Greece, Bulgaria, Croatia. You can get to all of those places in less time than it takes you to get from Melbourne to another part of Australia. So the winner of that category is London. To summarise, this is much more complicated than those categories. Based on those criteria, the winner is Melbourne. However, it's really hard to decide which place is better to live in and there are lots of other factors. A big factor for Lorna and I is we need a visa if we wanted to live and work in Melbourne and it's much harder to get than you'd think. Also, the fact we're near family and friends here plays a big factor into why we are living in London at the moment. However, this pandemic has made things a bit difficult. I really enjoyed looking back on my time in Melbourne for this vlog. I hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions, let me know, and I hope to see you guys again on another vlog. See ya.